In this lesson, we're going to look at some properties of addition, multiplication, and you can kind of see some examples here on the screen. Without putting any names to them, just thinking uh, intuitively, you probably know 6 plus 5 gives you the same answer as 5 plus 6. 6 times 5 is 30, and so is 5 times 6. And if you add 8, 3, and 1, it doesn't matter if you add 8 and 3 first, or if you add 3 and 1 first. Likewise, if you multiply 8 times 3 times 1, you can do 8 times 3 first, or group 3 times 1. Uh, doesn't make any difference in the answer. So that's, uh, without naming them, that's some of the kinds of properties we're going to look at. Now let's give some names to them. When you're adding, you can change the order of the numbers that you're adding, and you still get the same answer. That's the commutative property of addition. The algebraic definition of the commutative property looks like this, a plus b equals b plus a. It's kind of nice to use these letters, and you can write the definition or of a property in a very short space. If I wanted to write it with the words, I would say the order of the add-ins can be changed without changing the sum. So a numerical example would be 4 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 4. The commutative property of multiplication is similar to the commutative property of addition. They both deal with order. The algebraic definition would say a times b is equal to b times a. a and b are factors, by the way. Like in the addition, the a and b were the add-ends. I forgot to mention that. The numbers you add are the add-ends, and the numbers you multiply are the factors. So you can um, switch your order around to make the problem more convenient, however you want to do it. Um, Number-wise, if you had 8 times 6, and we use a dot there, there's another way you can symbolize multiplication. That equals 6 times 8. So that's the commutative property. You can switch the order, both for addition and multiplication. The associative property is a grouping property. And so in order to have groups, you have to have at least three add-ins or three factors. So you see a plus b plus c in our example. And we have these parentheses and stuff inside of it. Like here, we would read this as the quantity a plus b. And when you hear that, the quantity whatever follows would be in parentheses. So the quantity a plus b, meaning a plus b is in parentheses, which means you do that first, plus c equals a plus the quantity b plus c. So when would you want to do that? Well, maybe something like this. This would be 9. 9 and 7 make 16. But if you did the 3 and 7 first, they're partners of 10. So that 3 and 7 makes 10. And it's easy to add a single digit number to 10. 6 and 10 make 16. So both ways are answer 16. And you just use it for convenience. With words, you would describe this property as saying the grouping of add-ins may change without changing the sum. The associated property of multiplication involves again three, at least three factors. In this case, a, b, and c. And you can do a times b first, as shown here in this example, the quantity a times b multiplied by c would be the same as a times the quantity b times c. And when might you want to use this? Again, just to make the math easier for is one good reason to do it. You can do 3 times 4 and get 12. And if you know 12 times 5 is 60, you're done with that. But um, 4 times 5 is 20. And it's, for a lot of us, it's easier to do 3 times 20 than 5 times 12. But either way, you get 60 as an answer. So with words, we would say the grouping of factors may change without changing the product. The distributive property is sort of a pain to um, to deal with because it it seems to confuse more people than any other of the properties. It involves both multiplication and addition, so there's two things going on. You have to have at least three numbers. But I like the way of showing this with rectangles. Um, if we have here, we have um, a rectangle that's a four, top to bottom, and then two, and then five more. So it's 7 all the way across. So if you want to do the area, find the area of that. You know, you do length times width. So that would be 4 times 2 plus 5, which would be the same as if we have over here the 4 times 2, and then this again is 4 times 5. So this area would be uh, 8. I'll just write it in there, 8 square units. Put that in there, 8 square units. And then a 4 by 5 would be 20 square units. So together, they would be 28 square units. There's an, another way of showing that this 4 times the quantity 2 plus 5 should equal 28. But let's see what happens uh, when we do that. Um, 
we could actually look at this and say, here's a 2 plus 5 that makes 7, then 4 times 7 is 28, so that's one way to do it. But the distributive property basically says you can take this 4 and multiply it by the 2, get that answer. Then take 4 and multiply it by the 5, get that answer, and then add the two products. So 4 times 2 would give you 8 plus, you just use that, just keep that addition symbol in there. 4 times 5 is 20, and that's where we get the 28. When you write this uh, with the algebraic definition, it would look like this. If you have a number a times the sum of two other numbers, so here's the multiplication and the addition part of it, you know, indicating multiplication with the parentheses a times this number here, whatever b plus c adds up to. But if they're variables, you don't know their numerical value, so in order to simplify, you can simplify this algebraically, but you have to um, use the letters. So you're going to do a times b. The reason it's called the distributed property, or one way to think about it, is this, this a, this factor a, gets distributed or handed out to both the b and the c, whatever their values are. So it's going to be a times b, which I can write as a, b. I don't have to have any symbol in between. If you have two letters next to each other, it means multiply, plus a times c, because we're going to distribute the a, the multiplier, to the b and to the letter c, or to the variable, the variable c. So I'll write a, c. So that's the distributed property. So another way of thinking about it is you can you break this apart to be uh, back to the numbers. 4 times 2 plus 4 times 5. The identity properties for addition multiplication are very similar, so we're hitting them on one slide. Um, if we start with the number 6, then, and we want to, and we add something to it, but we maintain 6's identity, that is, we don't change it, which is how this kind of makes common sense. We're going to do some, uh, do an addition and then a multiplication, but we're not going to change the value of the number. So what would go in, in the blank here to make it be um, 6? Start with 6, add something, get 6. Start with 6, multiply by something, get 6. Two different numbers, by the way, which you probably know. Of course, this would be a 0, and this would be a 1. So you, the, um, the property, the identity property for of addition would say that any number plus 0 equals a number. And the identity property from multiplication would say any number times 1 would be that number. And then 0 is the identity element. It's called the identity oops, element for addition. And 1 is the identity element. Make a symbol, plus symbol here for multiplication. That's supposed to be plus. So they're called identity elements, which you, the element or the number that you use uh, with respect to a certain operation that doesn't change the value of the number that's being operated on. So when you put, if the operation is addition and you're starting with a 6, if you add 0, you still get 6. So 0 is the identity element for addition, and 1 is the identity element for multiplication.